Hi golfers and welcome to the golf hallway and today we are going to talk about the mystery of why sometimes you just are able to hit your iron so well and you cannot hit your driver to save your life. I hear you, but today that's exactly what we're going to talk about. All right, so a couple of things I want to mention is number one, your driver is obviously built very differently from your irons and I'm going to grab my driver right here and also my seven iron for you to see. So if you look at these two, obviously there are very, very specific differences, um, but the main one that I want to point out is the lie angle here. And the lie angle is really the angle between your shaft coming into the club and where the club sits flat. So this angle right here. So this angle right here is very, very different on a driver than it is on an iron. And this type of lie angle really dictates how much your club is standing up or kind of laying flat. So on a driver, your lie angle is a lot more flat. If you can see that the driver is going to lay, you know, flat on the ground and then it's going to come out this way versus that way. So that by its nature is going to make your plane a lot shallower. So people always ask me, do I have to shallow my plane with a driver? No, you do not because your club due to this build will already shallow your swing without you doing anything at all because it sets up differently. Also, your driver is longer than an iron, which makes you stand a little bit further away. So the further we stand away from something, if you think about it, the closer we are, the more you know upright our arms get, and that's gonna give us a more steeple plane. And the more far away we stand, the more flat our plane, plane will be naturally. So you don't have to worry about it at all because the driver is just built differently as long as you're set up is good with a driver and I'm going to link it below. I have a couple of videos on how to set up with a driver differently than with the irons. Um, please go watch it if you're not clear on that. But granted, if your setup is good, you don't have to swing any different with a driver. Now let's jump into one of the reasons why you can hit your irons so well, but not your driver. And I feel like everybody has a little bit of that, right? Some people are just better iron strikers and they are driving. And you know, it's fairly natural and normal. Um, to be a better iron player or to be a better driver player or to have one preference over the other. Um, that's normal. That's natural. Don't worry about that. However, you should still be performing pretty well with all of them, right? That's the goal so we can actually score. So the number one reason why on a day, you know, any given day where you feel like, oh, I can hit my iron super well, I'm hitting my wedges super well, but I just can't hit my driver, especially when you're starting to hit your wedges really well um, and your driver goes, there is really only one reason and it's because you're hitting down on the ball versus up. And with my little hallway here that has been so tried and true and helped us so much with our golfing game, um, I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to grab my driver and what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to set up to this wall as if it was towards the target. And then I want you to understand that as you're coming into the ball with the driver, you want to make sure that you hit that ball on the upswing, right? So your, your driver is going to bottom out somewhere here and then it's going to already start traveling up. So the first thing that touches that wall past impact right here is your driver. It's not your hands. It's not this, right? You see the difference? The driver head will wow, too aggressive <laughs> baseboard. We're good. Um, the driver head will touch the baseboard and the wall first. With your wedges, when you're hitting irons, and I'm gonna grab my iron here, you're going to have to actually feel like you're gonna hit down on the ball more and you're gonna have a lot more forward press. So your hands and your handle and your grip will be the first things to touch the wall, not this. If you're doing this, then you're scooping your irons, you're adding loft and you're kind of, you know, chunking them or hitting them probably a little bit behind the ball. So with your irons, you definitely wanna make sure you feel like that handle is hitting the wall first. But with your driver, as we said, you wanna make sure that you're setting up and you want to make sure that that driver head touches the wall first. And that's just something for you guys to keep in mind. Um, a couple of feels that I love to think about when I'm starting to not hit my driver so well, but I have a really good ball striking day on my irons and my wedges is just to stay behind the ball a little bit more and have that, that feeling of letting the club kind of overtake me almost at impact and having that club head lead versus having my handle lead. And that's really going to help you guys achieve that hitting up, achieve that positive angle of attack. Negative angle of attack is if you're hitting down on the ball, right? You're coming down this way. And again, if just in a neutral way here, if I were to just kind of push my hands forward, see how that de-lofts the club face. But on a driver, ideally, we actually want to have like a one degree up. You want to hit one degree up on it. So if we have our handle forward, we're really making that super hard on ourselves. It's almost impossible because then we'd have to kind of compensate for it by almost putting our weight back and it just becomes a whole, a whole thing you don't want to go into. So 
making sure that you feel like on a driver that club head can actually pass the hands and there is a lot of just passive rotation and it goes on and your head really stays back versus feeling like your handle leads. On an iron and on wedges, you really can feel your handle leading, on a driver, you don't. So next time when you start struggling with your driver or vice versa, you can apply these little tips and hopefully that'll bring the dispersion and bring that performance of these two clubs a lot closer together. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment below. If there's anything specific you'd like me to talk about, I'm always here for you guys, you know this, so pop it in the comments and thank you for watching. Thank you.